Welcome to Thriving Teacher Talk. I'm your host, Jillian Fernandez. I'm a former teacher from New York turned full-time mom and teacherpreneur on a mission to help you create a profitable and sustainable income selling your teaching resources or services. I'm here to make your life easier by giving you the best advice, trainings, and mindset shifts to grow your business, and most importantly, save you time and sanity. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Thriving Teacher Talk. As always, I'm so thankful to have you join me today as we talk about ways to help you organically grow your business. Now, I see this all too often. You're desperate to have your business grow and you want results fast. I mean, I can't blame you. I'm also a business owner and I too want to see results. As humans, we just want instant gratification at times. It's just in our nature. However, we oftentimes want to see results so quickly that we resort to these quote unquote strategies that are actually hurting our own progress. So I want to ask you a question. Have you seen this before? You post content on your feed and then a new notification comes up. Yeah, you have engagement and someone enjoyed your post. Then you take a look and you see, oh, follow me. I follow back or something like that. Or maybe you've seen this example. You're tagged in a comment on Instagram and see that it's a follow for follow loop and gives all these empty promises of gaining all these new followers. When you see these examples, do you sit there and think, wow, I want to buy their products or are you more or less annoyed? Probably the latter, right? (laughs) The problem is that often people resort to these strategies to build their Instagram accounts, but it results in an audience that do not truly care about what you have to offer and that you do not have a true connection with. So what should you avoid doing on Instagram? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Grab your coffee, a pen, and let's dive in. Here are the top three don'ts when it comes to Instagram. Number one is careless tagging. Now we often hear how important it is to tag others in our posts. By doing so, you can get more engagement and more eyes on our pages, but you want to do this when the content is relevant to the person you're tagging. So if you're calling them out for something incredible they did, maybe you use one of their resources in your classroom, great, tag them. Maybe you want to shout them out for something amazing that resonated with you. Amazing tag them. But if you're tagging people just to get eyes on your own content that has nothing to do with them, it's going to hurt you. So by tagging people in a post, yes, you are going to get more eyes on your page. But if the content you're tagging people in has nothing to do with them, they're just going to be frustrated with the tag. And honestly, it will most likely make them want to see your content less. You do not want to tag someone in a post that has nothing to do with them just so that you can get more eyes on your page. Here's the thing. If someone is following you, they will engage with your content when they feel they can relate to it. If they're not, tagging them can come across as spammy and could actually result in you losing those followers. The last thing you want to do is lose followers that were originally interested in you, your products, or your services. The goal is to gain and maintain an audience, not drive them away. When you're not sure if you should tag someone in a post, put yourself in their shoes. If someone else tagged you in that same post, would you find it spammy? How you answer that question will determine if you should tag that person or not. Again, if the post has nothing to do with the person you are thinking about tagging, just don't do it. Okay. Mistake number two is not being authentic when commenting. Here's what I mean. Another big mistake that people make on Instagram is commenting on posts that they do not resonate with just to hopefully get a follow. In order to be successful on Instagram, you need to be authentic. It's easy to spot someone who is not being genuine in the comments. So here's an example. You make a post, you spend a lot of time on it. You created the content, you made a caption, a call to action. You know that it's high quality. You posted it and someone comments with just an emoji or something generic. Do you appreciate the comment? Of course. However, do you feel that that person was truly engaged with your content? Probably not. Or They like or comment on other people's comments in your post, just hoping to garner attention and looking for people to follow them back. This is something that I see all the time, and it is quickly becoming one of my biggest pet peeves. Going in and liking most or all of the comments in someone else's post just to get seen is a really tacky strategy. Also, if it's not your post, definitely don't go into the comments section asking people to follow you or to check out your content. What would you do in this situation? Would you check out their page and follow them? Or are you going to probably move on to another comment? I think you know the answer. Now picture the same scenario, except this time there is a comment that says, I totally understand this. Your resource is super cute and would really help teachers out. I especially loved the real world example because my students always struggle with this. Now, in this case, 
you probably would check out their page and possibly follow them, right? You're probably more likely to do that now because there is a difference here. So what is the difference? In the second example, the reader senses authenticity. They know you took the time to read their caption, look at their content and found value in your resource. So be authentic with your comments. Don't just comment to comment. It's going to pay off in the long run. Remember that social media is social. You're here to build connections and relationships relationships, not just to leave a comment on a post just for the sake of leaving a comment. Make an effort to truly connect with people. That's what will make a big difference in how you organically grow an audience that truly respects and understands you and what your offers are. We're going to take a look at the last mistake in a moment, but first a message from our sponsor my premier course, Thriving Teacher Academy. Now, Thriving Teacher Academy was specifically designed to help teacherpreneurs develop a brand with impact, streamline your creation process, be confident in your design and quality, market effectively, and so much more. This is seriously the course I wish I had when I started my TPT store, and it comes with so many incredible practical tutorials, templates, and tips, plus the most amazing private Facebook community. Like, it seriously is. Now, doors will be opening for the Academy in the summer, but you can learn more and join the waitlist at www.jillianfernandez. That's all one word, jillianfernandez.com backslash thriving teacher academy. And you can find the link in the show notes. I can't wait to see you there. And now let's get back into looking at what to avoid doing on Instagram with our last mistake, asking for followers. <laughs> I saved the best, or should I say the worst for last? This one can really hurt your engagement on your Instagram account. Now, I'm sure you've seen comments like this before. Comments on posts that say, like, love this, follow to learn more about this topic, or follow for follow, question mark. You may have also seen these things called follow trains. These can be a huge hindrance to your growth on Instagram. So with follow trains, if you've never heard of them before, you have a series of quote unquote, hosts of people involved who you must follow. And then once you follow them, then you follow everyone else in a comment thread and then add in a comment yourself so that everyone has to follow you as well. So the idea behind this is that everyone follows everyone in the comments and you gain followers quickly. Now, are both of these strategies going to get you followers quickly? Yeah. However, in the long run, they're going to hurt you more than help you. What these strategies result in is you having all of these random followers on your account who don't believe in you, your product, your message, and who don't engage. This can actually hurt your reputation as a business owner and make your content get pushed out to less people. So think about it. If you were interested in, let's say, social studies resources, and you found an account that had, let's say, 15,000 followers, and you'd probably assume that they had great lessons. But what if they had 15,000 followers, but then you went to their most recent post or a few other recent posts and they only had like one, two, three likes and they barely had any comments or engagement at all. This happens because Instagram will push your content out to your followers first. If they don't engage, Instagram will not categorize your content as being valuable. So they will not push your content out to a larger audience. This is going to give the impression of a spam account. And this is going to make people start to look elsewhere for content that they may have originally been interested in. Remember that people buy from those they trust, not just those who seem popular or just have a lot of followers. There's absolutely no reason to just collect followers that will not ever be interested in what you have to say or your offers. I would much rather have 100 truly engaged people in my audience who are always there for me, who I can connect with and who will support my business journey over 100,000 followers who never engage or care about what I have to say. So do not ask for followers. It may take time, but they will come. You want to be authentic and grow your following organically because of you being real, genuine and providing your audience with quality content. So have you ever seen these quote unquote strategies on Instagram before? Do you agree that these will hinder your growth? Come let us know your thoughts on today's episode and tell us how you feel in our thriving teacher Facebook group. You can find that link in the show notes as always. I can't wait to chat with you next time as we continue to learn and grow our stores together. If you loved this episode, be sure to subscribe so you can catch all new episodes, leave a review if something resonated, or even just send me a DM. If you like this, I would really appreciate it if you 
you've shared it in your Instagram stories to spread the word about Thriving Teacher Talk because the more you talk about it, the more people hear about it. Thank you for letting me into your business and your life today. We are going to love growing together as you create a profitable and sustainable income, selling your teaching resources or services. I'm so honored to be here to make your life a little bit easier with the best advice, trainings, and mindset shifts to grow your business and most importantly, save you time and sanity. And I'll see you in the next one.